Yes, people, why football? And with about 20 or so games left in the Premier League season, today I'll be doing my absolute best to predict which four teams will make Champions League footy next season. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're new around and you love football, make sure you subscribe on my road to 2,000 subscribers. So let's bring up the Premier League table because... As always, it's always hard to predict who's going to make the positions, whether it's the top four we're talking about, Europa League, Conference League, winning the league or even relegated. It fluctuates so much in this sport and that's why we love it. But today, I think I've actually got kind of a good idea as to who I believe is going to make it. Of course, a lot can change and the January transfer window still open means a lot of clubs can have recruitment and change their team. But I think there's some nailed on teams. And I think there's some teams that are growing in confidence. So let's start with the teams that are guaranteed to make it. Manchester City. I think they're more likely to make the top four than Arsenal this season. And I'm saying that as an Arsenal fan. Just because we know Man City, even if they capitulate, they'll never ever like capitulate out of top four. Like that is so unlikely. I'd put all my life savings on it. Arsenal, if we capitulate, we could still capitulate out of the top four. That's just the way it is with us. Because we haven't shown a bounce back ability that City have shown in recent years where they don't string together bad losses week after week, whereas I know with Arsenal and seasons gone by, we've lost to Palace, lost to Brighton, lost to Southampton, and then before you know it, we've dropped nine points out of nine. That Something like that has happened with Arsenal in previous seasons. Now, we've got a new team, a new side, we look like we've got a new mentality about us, but still, going off recent memory, I can't be naive despite being an Arsenal fan, so I think City are guaranteed top four. With that being said, however, I still also believe Arsenal will make the top four this season. I think we've got a brilliant chance, and the funny thing is, I still think we're favourites to win the league, even though we're not favourites to finish top four. It, that, that makes no sense. I know what you mean, but I think I think this side, we are favourites to win the league in the position we're in. But I think if we capitulate, we could capitulate out of the top four, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't. But in my head, it makes sense. Either way, I think Arsenal will make the top four overall. So those two positions locked up, Man City and Arsenal. Who's next? For me, I think third place is Manchester United. I dropped a video recently on my channel, feel free to check it out after this one, talking about why I believe Manchester United are actually title challengers this season. After that horrific start to the season, losing to Brighton and Brentford, they've turned it around and pretty much gone almost flawless. 11 wins, 2 draws, 2 losses since then. It's a brilliant record and enough to compete with the likes of Arsenal and Manchester United. And they've got a grown squad and they've got a squad where the spine is solid. We've got a world-class, well, they've got world-class DM in Casemiro at that club. They've got a great centre-back partnership in Varane and Lisandro Martinez. They've got Bruno Fernandes pulling the strings. And they've got a striker that's scoring goals on a consistent basis in Marcus Rashford. That's all you need in the football club. The spine's there. The rest of the team packs itself out. Ronaldo leaving has mean they've got no outside destruction, uh, distractions about them. And I think, honestly, there's a squad that looks together. And they're winning games in the Premier League and in the Cups as well. They're going far in the Carabao Cup. FA Cup they're still in, Europa League obviously they've got a date with Barcelona to play, so they're looking good on all fronts Manchester United, it'll be a massive two weeks for them though because they're playing both Man City and Arsenal, if they get four points out of those six, that is massive for Man United because that is mean they've gained points on their rivals and they do not have to play them again, that's super important for them and I do think United will finish third this season. Now it goes to fourth because you've got a whole host of teams but you've only got one position left, who makes it? I'm going to walk through all the teams that I think can contend for that fourth position, starting with the team that's currently in favourites for that position, given the league standings, that is Newcastle United. What's the case for them finishing top four? Well, their defence. I watched them uh, when they played Arsenal. To be fair, I've watched a lot of Newcastle games this season. But what I paid uh, special attention to was when they played my club, Arsenal, at the Emirates Stadium. This team can defend, man. Like, they are the best defensive team in this league by a mile. I saw stats saying somewhere that they haven't conceded in seven hours. And I'm not surprised, because they are solid. I know they sat back and played negative football and I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's boring. Maybe it is boring, but they know what they're good at. It's defending because they can do it bloody well, trust me. If other teams try and do that, if Bournemouth tried to come to the Emirates and defended sitting 11 men behind the ball like Newcastle did, trust me, they can't defend like that. Like They're going to get found out by Arsenal one way or another. This team can defend. One loss this season, that was to a Fab Fabio Carvalho last minute winner at Anfield. Other than that, they'd be completely invincible, which is nothing to, to uh, sniff your nose up at. That's a brilliant record for Newcastle, and I honestly think they're in a great position. The thing is, can that bubble stay afloat, though? Because I look at their squad, and it's not amazing. Let's be completely honest, man. They're really overachieving for the squad they have. They've got Sean Longstaff and Joe Willock in midfield. Like, they've done good this season, but Bruno Gamarish is carrying that midfield. Joe Linton looks unbelievable. Almiron's the best thing since sliced bread, it seems. This brother's scoring week in, week out. So, is this Newcastle run sustainable? That is what we have to wait and see. But for now, they're looking good, man. They're looking solid and they're in good position for that. 
Then the next team in the standings is Tottenham Hotspur. These lot are erratic. I've said it before. I think Tottenham Hotspur, owning a season ticket to them is like having a season pass at Fort Park. It's rollercoaster FC. You don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes good. Sometimes they can't put in a good performance for their lives. They get completely dogs by Aston Villa at their home turf. Then they um, beat Crystal Palace 4-0 at Selhurst Park. Like, who can predict that? <laughs> no one. That's the point with Tottenham Hotspur. They've got Antonio Conte. Like, he's a world-class coach. We all know this. But he's getting fed up with that Tottenham squad. I can see it myself. They need those, these January recruitments in ASAP Rocky because they need a right back. I don't trust Emerson Royale. I don't know why Anton Antonio Conte does. And Matt Doherty, he just in and out. And he obviously does not favour Jed Spence, even though he bought him. I don't know what's going on there. They've got their match winners in Harry Kane and Humin Son, who hasn't really been firing this season, but we're kind of just waiting for him to kick into gear. The defence is average at best, let's be completely honest. But at the start of the season, they were picking up results, even though they weren't playing good football. Their football isn't sustainable. That is, for me, why I just think they're less likely to make the top four than Newcastle, just because their football is, hasn't been sustainable this season. Like, they're picking up decent results at times, but their expected points to how they're performing, they're well overshooting it, and even then, they're still only in fifth place. So Tottenham, I think I'm going to say they're out of it in comparison to Newcastle. But if they do make it, I would not be surprised given the manager they have, the calibre manager, and the match winner they have in Harry Kane. Next is Liverpool. Can Liverpool make the top four this season? That is a billion dollar question. Just like kind of we're expecting Newcastle to fall away, we're kind of expecting Liverpool to kick into gear. I mean, this is a team that for the past three, four seasons, barring, uh, bear, uh, barring in mind the 2021 season where Van Dijk was injured the whole season, They've been just flawless, basically. They've been competing with Man City toe-to-toe, -to -toe, winning endless games, immense momentum. But this season, they just kind of hit a roadblock. They haven't really got started. Now, I know there's been a few injuries, but I just think it's a lot of mental fatigue and as well as uh, physical fatigue. Their players are getting on in age. You can't have the same team for three, four years and expect it to perform the same. I think what's happened with Liverpool is they had those golden years with the Wijnaldum, etc. They've obviously brought Fabinho in and he was pivotal for them he was brilliant part of them winning the league etc Henderson as well but then what they've done is is they've tried to add some players like Thiago who's getting on in age and then the other players they've brought in are too young like the Harvey Elitz and the Fabio Carvalho they haven't got enough players ready now they've either got players that are too young to be in that midfield slash not ready yet or players that are too old to run in that midfield they need some world beaters right now they've had someone like Arthur come in he cannot seem to get in fit at all he's not playing any games that midfield's a big worry for me at Liverpool. They can't seem to get a win and battle in midfield. Like even against Leicester when they won 2-1 two, uh, two due to two own goals by uh, that face guy. In that midfield, they were losing battles. Leicester were getting through them way too easily. So that's my worry for Liverpool. And I think we're kind of all expecting them to do well because it is Liverpool and how much they've done in recent seasons. But I wouldn't be too sure, to be honest. Like They're an, they're an amazing club, don't get me wrong. And that Cody Gakpo signing could come good. And Nunes, of course, he's missing chances for fun. But he's getting chances, which is the main thing. So Liverpool really could slingshot up this table. But at the same time, like you need points on the table. How, how often can we say, Liverpool, I think they're going to make a run. Liverpool are going to make a run. Because before you know it, there's no games left for them to make a run. Do you get what I mean? Like they're about, what, seven points off the top off the top four right now. It's nothing in the grand scheme of things with 20 games left. But it's still, they've been a bit too inconsistent. Whereas a lot of other teams have been more consistent than them. Fulham, Brighton, look, they're, they're amazing to be in those positions, especially Fulham, given they only got promoted. They ain't got a chance of top four, let's be honest, let's skip them. Brentford as well, it's great for them to be there. And I'm a massive fan of Thomas Frank and the whole Brentford team, but I don't think they've got a chance of top four. And Chelsea as well, look, I mentioned them because they're a big club. I don't think they're getting top four this season, I'll be completely honest. And that's not even an outlandish thing to say. I'd go as far as saying I don't think they're getting Europe this season. This Chelsea team is in disarray with Graham Potter. I've spoken a lot about them, about the tactics they've had in uh, recent Chelsea videos, especially the one where they signed Jao Felix on my channel. But like that Chelsea team is, they need to focus on their process. They need to do what Arteta did with Arsenal, where it actually wouldn't be a bad thing if they miss out on all European football. I don't know if, they, I don't know if Todd Bowley, the new owner, would want to see that, given that he seems like a man that's really success-oriented and he's ploughed a lot of money into signings recently, that he'd want to see success. But it's not a formula for instant success. I think chemistry, cohesion, implementing your style is way more important than just getting instant success at a football club for the long-term gain of Chelsea. And I just think this season right now, they're in complete disarray. They're easy to beat. They're easy to run through. They're bringing on, they're bringing on younger players that look better than their older players. A lot of problems, more problems than answers at that football club. So I think they've got no real chance at it. So overall, I've said Arsenal, City and Man United, I believe, 
are basically guaranteed top four. Who's going to be that final position? Out of the three teams I mentioned, Spurs, Liverpool, Newcastle, I'm going to give it to Newcastle. That is going to be my prediction for the top four this season. It is going to be Arsenal 1, Man City 2, Manchester United 3 and Newcastle 4 with Spurs and Liverpool having the two Europa League spots. That is my final prediction. Let me know in the comment section down below whether you agree with that prediction. I spoke through a, a lot of the clubs in contention a little bit on each of them. So let me know also your thoughts on that down below. And if you're new around here and you love football-related content, make sure you subscribe on my road to 2,000 subscribers. I'll be my football and hope to see you all in my next video.